Lately I've been getting a few of these uh, serial interfaces from AliExpress and uh, this is just an RS-232 to TTL level converter well this one is an USB to RS-485 interface and it's great that we can buy these for cheap uh, but we are getting exactly that something cheap and this uh, converter chip is an FTDI which is likely not the best quality uh, it's probably a uh, fake FT232 chip and uh, the ones used on these converters are probably also the lowest quality and there is nothing worse than having to deal with communication issues and debugging your tools instead of the actual project you are working on so I have decided to replace these chips with some genuine good parts because the PCB and the rest of the circuit should be fine as long as we have a good conversion chip in there if you are looking for a professional PCB manufacturer with quick turnaround times you should definitely check out PCBWay.com their customer service is very nice, you get an agent assigned to your order, it's a real person which you can talk to over Skype should you need any help with your order. You might be wondering if there is any way to tell for sure that you've got an FTDI clone. There are at least two methods that I know you can use. First one is to install an older version of the driver which FTDI released in 2014 and after plugging in your fake FTDI depending on the driver version it will either disable the chip by writing something to its internal EEPROM or it will modify it so that it shows a custom alert message over serial instead of your actual data. I don't like this particular method because there is a better way. You can simply check the serial number which you can get from the device manager under Windows or FTProg utility. If your serial number is A5028.5bi then you most certainly have a fake chip because that is a popular serial number which is written to fake chips. They don't bother changing the serial number to make it unique uh, the same way they do it on the original chips. They mostly write the same number on the fake chips. And as we can see my board definitely has the A50285BI famous fake chip serial number so it's worth replacing this if I want to avoid issues caused by a fake chip. I don't have any spare FTDI chips but I do have this uh, serial to USB adapter that I built myself for maybe six years ago. I don't really use this anymore I have a bunch of others so I can sacrifice this one to salvage a good known chip. This is a genuine chip purchased from Fernell and I've checked the serial number on this it is unique it doesn't appear anywhere uh, mentioned on the web. As for the uh, Max 3232 chips, I also have some uh, new old stock. These are from Intersil. Now Intersil was bought by Renesas in 2016 and I believe you won't find chips branded Intersil anymore. But I know for sure I purchased these myself from a good distributor about 6 or 7 years ago. So they are genuine chips which I can trust. I won't bore you with watching me how I solder these uh, chips but if you'd like to hear some tips and tricks on how to improve your soldering I have done a couple of videos on the subject one is for SMT soldering the other one for through hole parts so you should check them out I'll link them on screen right now in this process I'm using the CaseGuard T12 soldering station and the Best 863 hot air station both of these have review videos on the channel if you are interested in learning more about these tools. And here are my boards after the chips have been replaced and cleaned they look like they're ready for some interesting serial port debugging. It is inconvenient to get these modules with fake chips some people can certainly get burned by this but if you are aware of the issue I've said this before even with the cost of replacing these chips they are still worth getting just for the value of the PCB and the rest of the circuit. As an alternative you could design your own serial converter adapters and I've done that in the past and you can source your own chips from a known distributor you can even add some features that are missing from these ones and I'll probably do that in a future video I'm especially interested in an isolated RS-485 to USB interface so I might do a video on that. This was a fun little weekend project for me I hope you enjoyed it don't forget you can support this channel on Patreon with as little as one dollar per month let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you next time with a new video